I have clicked on the Global Tropical Overview for February the 9th, 2023. As is always the case in these videos, the thoughts expressed here are mine alone, and if you're here looking for local information to you ahead of a tropical cyclone, you're in the wrong place, so I ask you a big picture of things, and I cannot get down to the local level at your local weather office, or local emergency management can. So across the tropics today, we've got the same three systems active, in fact, one designation change, but we're going to primarily focus on Tropical Cyclone Gabrielle, which is now a severe tropical cyclone by the Bureau of Meteorology. Here it is right now, uh, making that pass in between Queensland and New Caledonia that we talked about for the past several days. And uh, this is setting up for what could be a significant event for New Zealand uh, towards day four and day five now. And we'll get more in depth on that. Uh, but just looking at this imagery, uh, something neat to point out is we talked about how there would be a trough digging into southeastern Australia, and that would allow a jet streak to form generally in this region and allow a good outflow channel. And we are seeing that right now. You can see that on the upper level Cirrus. You can also see, uh, see that on the water vapor view here with all this outflow expanding uh, towards the southeast of the system that's really helped the system intensify. Though the system is not perfect, it has had its struggles. Uh, here's an Ascat pass, mainly wanting to show this to show the extent of the winds. Again, we got a kind of a partial pass on uh, Gabrielle here, but there's the coastline of Australia, and you can see here this is the 30 knot wind field right here, generally there. It kind of that does that type of maneuver there on the northwestern side but pretty expansive wind field and we've also got some 40 knot barbs here well away from the center but if we look at microwave imagery we start to see that this system is struggling a little bit the eastern side of the system is pretty well defined there's a pretty well defined area of thunderstorm activity east of the core but on the western side we notice it is pretty void of really any activity at all and we start to ask the question, why is that there? And my theory on why is you'll notice with the trough over Australia, there is a lot of dry air in the mid levels. And what I guess is happening, it's not too evident on this loop, but perhaps in the mid levels or in the upper levels, perhaps this dry air is getting entrained to the system. And that may be why we're seeing this little void area of really any convection on my, on the microwave pass here. Regardless of this though, the system is still pretty strong. Uh, as I say, it's a severe tropical cyclone here on the Bureau of Meteorology forecast. They are expecting this to remain a severe tropical cyclone up to just about to where it reaches Norfolk Island, which it weakens to a category two. At this point, the system is going to be not really weakening, but it's going to be enlarging. As these systems become extratropical, they they grow their wind fields substantially, and that attributes to their overall high sustained wind speed weakening, but they're still holding all that power just in a larger area. And here we've also, I want to mention, got a cyclone warning now for Norfolk Island. A cyclone watch was issued yesterday. Now we have a cyclone warning in place. And in terms of the New Zealand impacts, we are still expecting a significant blow. Uh, here is the weather map from the GFS. Uh, I would use tropical tidbits normally, but uh, unfortunately they are down for maintenance today. So we are stuck using uh, this website, which works fine. Uh, but here is a GFS model, pretty much showing what it has for the past several days. And there's that enlargement of the wind field. You notice here towards the beginning of the run, the wind field is fairly compact. Uh, and tropical cyclone like but as it goes further southeast it enlarges as it becomes an extratropical cyclone and as it does so it does weaken a little bit but notice how the pressure is still pretty low even 970 is still fairly low for an extratropical cyclone and this system as we talked about you'll notice this bridge here south or now west of New Zealand. This is going to push eastwards. We'll be off the screen on this particular map. We looked at it yesterday and the days before on Tropical Tidbits, and we showed that ridge east of New Zealand. This one is going to, as I said yesterday, trap the system, and it has to go around the flow of this ridge. So the system can't just simply cross New Zealand like that. It has to round that ridge and so you'll see on the model as we saw yesterday a turn right into new zealand and we'll go ahead in that and you can see there you go and some strengthening also possible depicted on the model and this this, this 
model field is a bit finicky, but there you go. Uh, that is a very significant system moving into New Zealand, especially on the northern peninsula here of New Zealand. You could have some real nasty conditions taking place. And in terms of alerts in New Zealand, we do have some t uh, issued right now. For the northern tip, that peninsula that I just talked about, strong wind watches and heavy rain watches are in effect. And uh, no doubt these will be extended further south as time goes on. As uh, this will be quite the system to start the week next week and end your weekend off. Uh, but for those in New Zealand, stay tuned to the local med office there. That's where I got this information here. I'll leave a link to this map specifically in the description uh, down below. Uh, but that is really all that I've got to talk about Tropical Cyclone Gabrielle. The system, again, most impacts are expected to be brought to Norfolk Island and New Zealand. Norfolk Island, you've got a cyclone warning in, a place, in place now. In New Zealand, you have a high wind watch and a heavy rain watch for the northern peninsula. And I would not be surprised to see those extended further south. As again, we are expecting a strong system to come in. Timing being late weekend into early next week. You can see on the model field, this is Monday. So really, this would actually be Tuesday, I think, local time here. So a pretty nasty end to the weekend. It starts in the week ahead. As in always prepare ahead of it. And uh, that's always what we say. Prepare ahead, prepare for the worst, and hope for the best. So moving back to the Southwest Indian Ocean, we do have a couple things going on. I mentioned we had a designation change. 94S, after so long has finally become a tropical cyclone and has now gained the name tropical cyclone dingani and this system still looks fairly sheared and fairly disorganized but it has become a tropical cyclone we do have an ascat pass that unfortunately kind of got sliced on the um, northern side of the storm but we saw some 45 knot barbs there uh, this system could be 45 or 50 knots um i'd be willing to bet 45 knots just with this ASCAT pass. Um, but we had an ASCAT pass earlier confirm that there was a low, uh, closed low level circulation here, fairly well defined, and that gives us a tropical cyclone with the convection sustaining over it. This system is forecast to generally stay out to sea over the next several days and could become a cyclone that is forecast by Mateo France. Uh, and for reference, this is the island of Rodrigues. And I'll even scroll. Uh, even westwards you see you can see where all the locations are there's Mauritius and La Reunion you can see even by the end of this forecast very very far out to sea and uh, generally from the pattern it is a bit uncertain at this time there's the potential that the system keeps going a bit west but knowing how far south this system is I'd be inclined to agree that this system would probably recurve, but if it were to continue westwards, it would probably go south of these islands, and impacts would probably be minimal at this time. But of course, this is over five days out. Pay attention to it, and lots of things can change. Now we also have Tropical Cyclone Freddy, which is really meaning remaining steady I, I should say over the past couple of days on the satellite you've just seen these deep lopes of convection and very good outfall on the western side with that easterly shear still impacting the storm now last night something interesting happened uh, the deep convection that freddie had been sustaining for at least a couple days had actually completely died off and then it refired a deep convective burst and now here we are today with still a convective burst but this is uh, not a severe tropical cyclone anymore this is a just a cyclone and it is still compact uh, but this system is forecast to generally track in the general direction of 94s or now dengani here's the bureau of meteorology forecast this only goes out a little bit you can see category two here as it passes close to the cocos islands and there's christmas island there so you can really tell how far away from land this is going to be and in terms of track this system is probably going to take a similar track to dingani however models are more split on this as is expected this is a more uncertain forecast with it being so far out the models are uncertain if they want this system to recurve alongside 94s or if they want it to potentially go westwards 
Some model solutions for the very long range take this way west towards Madagascar in the very long range. Now, is that confirmed? No, that is probably almost 400 hours out on those models. And we struggle getting five day forecasts right uh, a lot of times with these tropical segments. So if you're in any of the islands like Mauritius and La Reunion, Rodrigues or Madagascar, there is no reason to panic over these systems. They're far out to sea and they're far out from you. But it would be a good idea to stay tuned to Mateo France. And of course, I'll have videos out over the next several days, continuing on Gabrielle and these systems and just mo monitor the systems. It's always a good idea, especially when you're around the peak season time of cyclone season, which we are just about into. And you never know what these systems might do. We might have a system get fairly close to one of those land masses in the long range, and we may have to deal with some impacts. Uh, but uh, I want to show this quick ASCAT pass here uh, on Invest, or not, Tropical Cyclone Freddy. You can see a fairly compact wind field here. Uh, this got, looks like maximum winds might be around 50 or 55 knots. Uh, I see a 50 knot barb there, uh, but this is a fairly compact system. So you, I'd say a good estimate might be 55 or 60 knots. Uh, looks like the JTWC have this at uh, around 50 knots, uh, which is reasonable, I'd say, for the Saskat Pass. But really, that is all that I've got to talk about in today's Global Tropical Overview. Lots going on in the tropics, and thankfully, Gabrielle is only is our only land threat. Freddy and Dingani are staying out to sea, but I'll keep you all updated on what happens with those systems. So thank you all for watching, and uh, I will have more videos out in the week to come, especially as we get towards the impacts of Gabrielle on New Zealand. I'll continue updates on that, despite it not being a tropical cyclone down there. So stay safe ahead of the cyclone Gabrielle, and I hope you all are doing well.